So I recently received a comment on one of my previous videos, which the guy was talking about Gen 9 mythical Pokemon, which I have for some reason never thought about the Gen 9 mythical Pokemon. I just kind of randomly forgot about it, I guess. As of right now, there are no confirmed mythical Pokemon coming out with Generation 9, which is crazy because this might be the first time in a generation where we don't get a mythical Pokemon. I don't want to jump the gun though, it's never too late. We we don't really know everything that's happening in the DLC, but I'll definitely get to that later on in the video, just stay tuned. So we already have the entire first part of the DLC, and then part two has been announced and we've seen some slight sneak peeks of some of the Pokemon we're gonna get. Also guys, quickly, once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway for a $20 Nintendo eShop gift card. All you have to do to enter that giveaway is just subscribe to the channel, leave a like down below and a comment letting me know that you wanna be in the giveaway and then stay tuned for future videos and stuff. Once I hit 10,000 subs, I'll be announcing that giveaway winner. So with the Teal Mask, we got some new Pokemon, but no mythical. We did get a few new legendaries. We got four, Ogre Pond, and the loyal three and then we also got a few just regular pokemon but so far the pokemon that we know about that are coming in the indigo disc are raging bolt iron crown which are paradox forms of raikou and Kabalion. we're getting archaludon which i think has some like theories behind it because he's like a bridge and some people are thinking like that's a bridge to another region or maybe that's the bridge to the mythical i guess we'll see uh and then we're also getting Terrapagos and then Diplin's Evolution, which I don't think has an official name yet, but let me know in the comments if it does. And then also, spoiler warning, just in case this actually does come true, I'm pretty sure that there were some leaks about a Paradox Pokemon version of Entei and Terrakion. So I don't know if those are confirmed yet, but I'm pretty sure those were like data mined. I haven't seen any pictures or anything of that. I've only seen like one person actually say that, so take that with a grain of salt. But we've had a mythical Pokemon within every single generation. Generation 1, of course, we had Mew. Celebi was in Gen 2, Jirachi, Deoxys in Gen 3, and then Gen 4 we got Fione or Fione, never know how to pronounce that, Manaphy, Darkrai, Shaman, and Arceus or Arceus, and then Gen 5 of course, the best gen, we got Victini, Caldeo, Meloda or Meloida, whatever how you want to say it, and then Genesect, and then with Generation 6 we got Deancey, Hoopa, and Volcanion, Generation 7, which we got actually a lot in Generation 7, we got Magirna, Marshadow, Zerora, Melton, and Melmetal which kind of a crazy gen for mythicals and then of course generation 8 we got Zarude and I believe Zarude actually ended up showing up later on like they released him later on uh in Sword and Shields like lifespan so maybe that's the case with Scarlet and Violet but I just find it weird that they haven't said anything and if we don't end up getting a mythical with the indigo disc like I said there this might be the first time we're gonna get zero new mythical Pokemon in a mainline Pokemon game. And if they plan on releasing a mythical Pokemon, but don't give it to us within the part two DLC, I'm thinking maybe down the line, they're gonna like make some type of a limited time event going on in 2024 to bring back players to the game. But I also kind of feel like that's a little bit unlikely, but not out of the realm of possibility. I would actually like that to be the case because it'll give us a third reason to come back to the game. The first reason being part one of the DLC, Second reason, of course, being the second part of the DLC, and then the third reason would be whatever mythical event they're gonna add into the game later before they release another Pokemon game. A lot of people also thought that Terrapagos might be the mythical because mythicals usually have like a simple and smaller cute design to them with, you know, most cases, you know, like Deoxys is like an example of that not actually being the case, but it looks like Terrapagos is actually just another legendary, which makes sense because he's like the cover face icon of the DLC part two, similarly to how Ogre Pond was like the face, the mascot of the part one of the DLC, you know what I'm saying? I kind of find it crazy though that we've had so many legendaries in Scarlet and Violet with zero mythicals because we got of course Corridon, Meridon, and then the four legendary Pokemon released in part one of the DLC. Also we're getting like, you know, the Paradox version of Raikou and stuff like that. I also feel like they would have like marketed the DLC part two to have the mythical Pokemon because it would just bring in more sales. I mean, it's still never too late though because part two doesn't release for, you know, at least like another month or two. There's no official date yet, but like that doesn't mean they still can't announce that there will be a mythical Pokemon in there. Maybe they don't have it in the data or something yet. I'm not really too sure. So I guess it's not unlikely that they could still announce a mythical coming out. But as of right now, the recording of this video, they haven't said anything. And at the same time, though, I feel like they would make the mythical available for everyone and not just the people that own the DLC, because that would be the most fair thing to do. And then it would also actually bring back even more players to the game, because 
of course, people with the DLC are going to come back because they already purchased it, but if the mythical event, whatever, comes around to everybody that owns Scarlet and Violet and not just the DLC, a lot of people are going to come back and then they might actually end up buying the DLC because they want to get back into the game. You know what I'm saying? Hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to think of that as like a business standpoint, like where they might be with the mythical Pokemon because mythical Pokemon don't come around all that often. Of course, with every generation, we've had a mythical Pokemon, but they're like special Pokemon. You know what I'm saying? And if we do actually get like another small type of gameplay available for everyone in the regular game after the indigo disc is released i hope that we can actually get whatever the mythical pokemon might be by doing some type of like puzzle or quest like something actually fun rather than just getting a code or just hopping on and getting it for free like that's one of the issues with mythical pokemon in my opinion it's just like it's a mythical pokemon there's sh there should be some really cool backstory or quest that we have to do to access this pokemon it shouldn't just be like Oh, you own the game? Okay, type in this code between October 20th and October 27th to get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just so easy, and I feel like that kind of defeats the entire purpose of some of the mythical Pokemon that have just been given out for random events. I think it's fine to do the code events when it's, like, an old mythical Pokemon. Like, I'm pretty sure in the past with Mew or something, they had a code that you type in and you get a free Mew with Scarlet and Violet. Like, that's fine, because Mew has been out since Generation 1, and it's like, everyone already has several Mews throughout all the generations of Pokemon. But, like, if it's a brand new mythical introduced in a brand new game, brand new generation, there should just be a really cool way to actually obtain that Pokemon, in my opinion. And speaking about, like, the DLC Part 1 Pokemon, Legendary Pokemon, I mean... I thought Ogre Pond had an amazing design, and Terrapagos actually looks like it has a really cool design too. I actually like that design a lot, but Ogre Pond had a really cool design, and I thought it was really unique how she, which I think it's a she, could like change her mask and stuff and kind of change her look. But the Loyal 3, in my opinion, had really mid designs for legendary Pokemon. Like, I like their designs, but as far as a legendary Pokemon goes, I feel like their designs were not that cool. I still enjoyed the DLC Part 1 though, and I'm really looking to Part 2. I do hope Part 2 though has a little bit more gameplay. I feel like Part 1 of the DLC was very short, so let's hope that Part 2 is just a little bit longer. But overall, let's just hope that we get a Mythical Pokemon because they haven't said anything, which is just mind-blowing to me, and I don't really know why I never thought about the Mythical Pokemon for Generation 9. Let me know down below in the comments if you would want to see a Mythical Pokemon or like, how would you want to obtain it? Like, I just find it hard to believe that they would skip a generation of mythicals because, I mean, generation 8, we only got one mythical, which honestly, I think one mythical per generation is great. Like, I don't see the need to have several mythical Pokemon within one generation because, like, I think a mythical Pokemon should be, like, once in a blue moon type of thing. And with nine generations, I feel like there should only be nine mythical Pokemon, but I like all the mythicals that we have. It's just kind of, it's just weird that we haven't had one yet. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully they release it with the mainline game available to everyone with a really cool additional gameplay or just some type of cool feature, cool quest, cool storyline behind it to actually obtain the Pokemon. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Alrighty guys, I'll see you guys in the next video.